one month into a life after people. Outside Atlanta, an outbreak of kudzu is starting to spread. The vine was brought to the United States in 1876 from Japan for farmers to feed their animals and for erosion control. It was a big mistake. It grows in bright sunlight and on fertile soils very rapidly. It can grow up to a foot a day, so you can have a 60-foot vine where you had nothing. Known as the vine that ate the south, Kudzu has a vast root network that spreads more than 15 feet underground. In the time of humans, it required constant cutting by a 25-man maintenance team just to keep the roadways clear in Atlanta and the surrounding county. You have to keep going back and killing the above ground portion of the plant until you've exhausted the energy reserves in the root system. And considering the size and the depth of those roots, it can be a very difficult job. With no known natural enemies in the region and no humans to contain it, Kudzu starts wreaking havoc. The non-native species start strangling trees, climbing telephone poles and power lines, covering bridges and roadways, and enveloping rural houses. It creates a situation that there is nothing growing there but the kudzu. And what you have is literally a dead spot in the environment. In the southern United States, Kudzu is not only smothering the countryside, it's invading Atlanta and its city center skyscrapers and commercial structures. Fifty years after people are gone, Kudzu could certainly cover the Coca-Cola building and most of the major buildings in downtown Atlanta, provided that there was a starting point for them already there. And there is Kudzu in small and abandoned lots in Atlanta. Kudzu would begin to creep out of those sites. After the kudzu vines die in the winter, the plant sends out new vines in the spring that use the old dead vines as a platform from which to continue climbing. The deep underground root network stores vast amounts of nutrients, providing the plant with an inexhaustible amount of energy. There could be vines 100 feet up the building, up any building. It's quite capable of growing that fast and that far and holding on tightly. There is no physical barrier short of a water or a creek or a river that would stop the growth of kudzu. So it would be the beginning phases of a green blanket covering parts of the south. The outbreak of kudzu sets the stage for an epic disaster. Even in the time of humans, Atlanta suffered from periodic droughts. Now, heaps of dried, brittle kudzu carpet the city, creating a tinderbox. A thunderstorm moves in, and lightning strikes. Just like it did during the Civil War, Atlanta is burning again.